So collaboration, I did some research, because I'm often asked to, ask to talk about collaboration. And so I thought, I'd better do some research. And I found there's a guy called Morton T. Hansen. In, uh, he, does, he works in SEAD as well, another business school, and at Stanford. And he said, uh, he started his research saying, collaboration must be good. It sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds nice. Everyone collaborating sounds good. And he said, actually, he looked at some work, and, and sometimes collaboration isn't the right thing, just, to, just for a moment, to throw some grit in the oyster. He said, the danger is collaboration looks like having lots of meetings, doesn't it? Let's all collaborate. Let's go have a long meeting about it. And he found that IBM tried to do some collaboration. It just ended up with may, much, much more meetings. So some things may not do, require collaboration. I don't know. Maybe some small things you just get on with yourself. I'm not sure. But what does collaboration really look like? Because, uh, of course, the Latin is co labor to work together. We call it co-creation, to do something together. And that's the whole point I'm trying to make when I say it's, the problem with collaboration is other people. Because, of course, you've got to work with them and their different ideas. We find, though, on this stage and in other areas, organizations, if you do really work together, you kind of create something over and above the, the two of you. The danger is you just think, oh, collaboration means having lots of meetings. So that's by way of warning. Steve has come up with six great practices that sort of sum this up. So we could hear one of them. Well, yeah, we, we could do. Um, before we explore them, whilst other people can be the problem in collaboration, uh, and I tend to agree with Neil on that, change starts with self. So I've worked in uh, LNOD for many years and read many dull books on change and models. And the only two things that so I've found So what does LNOD mean? Leadership and organisation development. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, just there, yeah. I, OD I know, I didn't know. I just throw in extra words okay. and uh, hope no one asks. X, <laughs> X and OD. Yeah. X and OD, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know, just making <laughs> it up. Um, but the key thing is that there's only two rules that I've found to be true about change. And one is you can only change yourself. And the other one is you can only change the present moment. So even though collaboration is about working with other people, you have to start by looking at yourself. And that's where these six collaborative practices came from. Um, they're practices that are very simple to get your head around. They're things that you can bring into your day-to-day -day work, but they're not easy. Because adopting these practices requires us to let go of stuff. It requires us to let go of some of our adult sensibilities, maybe let go of some of the rules our parents told us. Let go of some of our education. And the most scary thing for people in business is let go of potentially the very things that got us to where we got to today. So what Neil and I are going to do, and there's a little, in case you haven't clocked it yet, practices means doing stuff. So you're going to be doing stuff. Um, so just let that settle and notice whether you're excited or anxious about that. Um, the beauty of these practices are they're very simple um, and you get better exploring them. So what Neil and I are going to do is introduce you to two at a time and then give you some practice. You up for that? That's a closed question, but <laughs> <laughs> unless we have to completely change the script. Um, so let, let's, let's have a look at the first one. So the first practice is called Mad, Bad and Wrong. So there's a great improviser that Neil and I like, a chap called Keith Johnson, who invented a lot of the uh, techniques in modern improvisation. And he said anyone can improvise, therefore anyone can collaborate if they can get over their fear of being perceived as mad, bad or wrong by others. Does that resonate? Because what we do as human beings, we've, we're programmed biologically and socially to keep ourselves safe. Our lizard brain stops, makes us run away whenever we're threatened um, to escape saber-toothed tigers, stuff like that. Our mammal brain preserves relationships and our human brain looks for everything to be logical. So every time we come up with a spontaneous idea that may be helpful in collaboration, a little internal PR man senses it and says, Neil's going to say this. Well, that could come across as mad. That could come across as bad. That could come across as wrong. Let's get him to say something different. And then you self-censor, and you operate into a script that isn't you. So this practice is about getting comfortable with um, getting more comfortable with um, letting go of your need to be seen as saying good and right. Most of us can be a bit more mad, bad, and wrong than we thought. And getting good at this practice, uh, believe you me, I experience it every day probably experiencing it now, doesn't mean you're no longer perceived as mad, bad, or wrong by others. It just means you don't really care as much. So there's one practice. Let's do another one, and let's, let's play with some. Uh, we, we'll stick these up. These are on a collaboration card, by the way, that we can give out at the end. They're also at the back. And the second practice that we'll introduce you to now is called Say Yes to the Mess. 
So as human beings, we're predisposed to say no. Saying no to stuff keeps us safe and certain. It protects us. But saying no stifles collaboration. If I'd said no to Neil when he rang me up uh, to do this, I wouldn't be doing it. Saying no stifles innovation. I mean, innovation is at the heart of all of our business strategies at the moment. If you say no to stuff, you're never going to experiment and you're never going to grow. <laughs>